Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Syntegrator, and here we are the next day with Dave's Juno 106 with all of his precious pack rat patches restored by Visor 106 last night. So what are we going to do? We're going to evaluate those presets, check them out. Well, we can. I've actually got some powered speakers hooked up. So we could do that, but what I'm going to do is take an opportunity to go through the stability of all of the front panel controls here uh, because the visor software actually provides a very good diagnostic as to whether switches are bulky or not or whether faders are flaky. Um, so we're going to start over on this side and with this fader here and I'm going to just move it and as you can see we get two-way motion on that and that guy's good. So we'll start with the delay time. Uh, now if you take a look take a look at the the attack fader see that I'm, I'm just got my finger hovering over it on the touch screen so that there's like a little sphere around it as I'm moving the delay time over here uh, oh is he not reacting now flaky okay let's move on now what we would be seeing here is spurious behavior when a fader doesn't okay look at that you see the way that fader is jumping up and down Okay, what's going on here is that the electrical signals being produced by this fader are very jumpy and jittery as opposed to the smooth motions we would like it to have. So this is just one of the ways that this, this editor software comes in extra handy. Now the PWM doesn't go all the way up to 100% and the reason for that is in fact a little known uh, gritch, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a uh, bug, a feature, I don't know. Um, the faders on the Juno 106 don't send the full 100% range. So these go from 0 to, I don't know, I forget what it exactly the output range is um, on the control. I could dial it up, but if I did that, I'd mess up my screen capture because uh, if I turned on the MIDI monitor on, on the software. Oh, what the hell, let's do that. Um, I'm just going to turn on the MIDI monitor here, and then I am going to scroll this up so that we can actually see this now what's going on system exclusive messages okay all the way up to 7f okay that one's going all the way up to 7f see down here 7f and uh, that means it goes all the way up to 127 in hexadecimal but then this guy over here only goes all the way up to 60 or 68 i'm sorry 68 oh, not even that sometimes 68 Right. Okay, which is you know just over a hundred um, in normal decimal. So I guess the the point I was trying to make without all of the technological babble. Let me just bring this back down into the capture view. All right, is that uh, the PWM doesn't actually send the full range, so that's natural. But look at this. I am still seeing that attack, the envelope attack, warbling away. Um, so let's just keep on going which is fine we got bulky tacks here so I am not surprised uh, and I'm just gonna stop and sort of say uh, on a synth this age even one that's been kept indoors and properly maintained like Dave's has as you can tell from looking at it it's in great cosmetic shape what happens is these tack switches just start to become flaky after I guess about 15 20 years uh, they're little sealed units maybe dust gets inside them and that's probably what happens dust and other crapola gets inside them and they start to become intermittent um, and so the only solution on that is to replace them fortunately I have a large supply of tack switches standing by because you know I, I do an awful lot of these Juno rebuilds all right so good the sub is fine the noise is fine let's check the all important now the HPF is going to jump to zero in between steps that's just the way that it works that's good this part is unobtainium. Replacing it is not easy to do. You have to get one from a wrecked Juno 106 and they're expensive. Uh, whereas the faders, you can get new replacements. Or in my situation, I just open them up and recondition them. Uh, okay. All right. So the, these guys are okay. VCF is okay. Envelope is okay. LFO. This one's dirty. I can feel the crud inside the fader fighting back. Um, 
but it's fine. Whoa! Did you see that? This guy kind of... Yeah, look at that. Oh my. Okay, all is not well in uh, in this circuit board uh, or in these faders. I'm Generally, when I see this kind of strange behavior going on where the, the one of these faders here is actually, I'm going to go over to the software. When one of these faders here has a collateral effect on one of these faders over here, that's usually because there's a, actually an, an op amp um, circuit. Uh, I'm not an op amp, I'm sorry, a multiplexer, demultiplexer chip that has checked out or is not behaving itself. Uh, or sometimes it's just that we've got a, a fader that is literally got electrical problems so by replacing the one bad fader we can get rid of weird ghost behavior like this um, and sometimes it's necessary to get rid of a fader now fortunately for Dave I also have a backup supply of faders up my sleeve oh oh okay you know we I think we can definitely take it to the bank that the attack on this guy is out um, yeah we got we got definite sickness in this fader block here um, as evidenced by the jittering it's definitely the attack and the decay are are really sick okay so then these guys are all good too so all right um, I think we've, we've we've exhausted all of the possibilities with this let me just go on and show you why this is a problem uh, you will be loading up a patch and playing a song quite happily. Let me get another preset here. Might be one of these moody guys. And suddenly one of those bulky faders will suddenly kick in and perform a ghost edit on you. Now, let me see. Now, when we're seeing those lights go on again, this is the editor in action. I'm going to um, just disconnect. I'm, I'm reaching back here. You can't see it. There's a function switch on the back of the Juno, and I'm switching it so that it's not operating with system exclusive anymore. And by not operating with system exclusive anymore, that's the messages that the editor uses to keep uh, in touch. We can now uh, take a look at this display here, and if any light goes on, then you know. See, we make an edit, see how the light goes on, right? Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's reselect this. Well, doesn't seem to be doing it now. In the previous video, uh, I used uh, an MX-49 synthesizer to produce kind of a trancey sort of backbeat while I loaded up all these presets. I actually originally thought, oh, I wanted to make a little quick little theme using the Juno itself. And when I was trying to record track parts using this Juno, of course, that phantom editing kept kicking in and ruining it. My synth bass would suddenly become a big wide open synth sound and so on and so forth so go figure that it's uh, not doing it now but it it was doing it before and it will do it again so what we got to do is ultimately this entire panel board has to be pulled out and serviced and that's going to be a future video in this playlist all part of the general service that happens uh, when I rebuild one of these Junos so um, in the meantime, then, why don't we just, uh, I'll just mess around a little bit. But as you can see here, I'm not, uh, I'm not updating any of the, uh, uh, the patches are not being updated by the editor right now. These are basically just being loaded from memory.
These, these are good patches. And, uh... Ooh, that's cool. That's an oil bass. Oil drum bass. There's something about a Juno that uh, you just can't match. Uh, incidentally, I have a Jupiter 80, and I've downloaded those, um, you know, legacy Capture the Soul ones. I have a Jupiter 80, and I have a D50, and actually, I'm a huge D50 fan. And I'm sorry, but while they are good, they kind of remind me of, you know, the Marshall stack on a pod. It sounds great on its own context, but if you actually have a real Marshall stack to AB, you, you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll use the real one. That's not the point, though, I guess. But there's a reason why we go crazy rebuilding these synths and keeping them in our arsenal, because they have a unique characteristic. Uh, they're worth having. Oh, by the way, YouTube legal, legal guys, I'm just making this stuff up. It's, it's uh, musical doodling. It's not copyrighted material from anybody else. Complete with mistakes, which of course were done for artistic intent. And some bad blues. That's kind of rude sounding. I love it. Woo! Nice sweep, Dave. Nice sweep. So I'm really glad we backed up all of these patches. Um, yeah. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to have a word with the guys at SciCraft and see if perhaps Dave's pack rat set could be included in when this software is released so that you too can have access to the Dave pack rat sound set. Of course, we're going to have to get the permission of the author because it's a copyrighted work, of course. Anyway, I think we're done here. Uh, next stop, we're going to take this baby back to the workshop and we're going to pull out eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Ah, this here control board. Yep, the panel board's coming out and the panel board is going to get serviced. So that's next in the playlist, of course, once I actually do it. So stay tuned and uh, should be fun.